I will be reading from Paul's second letter to his son in the Gospel Timothy. My subject matter tonight is no fear gear. For God hath not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and of a sound mind. 2 Timothy 1.7 The other day while listening to the news, I was again impressed by the number of items that could have caused fear in your life and mine. 11 and 12 year old boys die of electrocution while swimming in a lake. 268 individuals died of COVID-19 in Italy in the past 24 hours. Restaurants and pubs will be closed for the next 15 days. The worst fire season in history is being experienced in Australia. The stock market dropped 3,000 points in one day. When the phone rings, do you usually think it is bad news? When someone does not show up for church or another event, does your mind usually travel to the negative? When a loved one is late arriving home, do you assume the worst, an accident perhaps? When you hear a siren, do you assume it was someone you know that is involved in an accident? When you cough, do you imagine that you have an incurable disease? My mother died of cancer at age 54. I am now 61. I could be walking about saying, oh no, this is my year to die. But I refuse to live in fear. Fear is negative, counterproductive, takes away from life. It can be paralyzing. Do your thoughts generally run to the worst case scenario? God never intended for his people to live in fear. Fear is faith in the enemy. I'm going to say that again. Fear is faith in the enemy. Fear is a liar. When God created an environment for man to live in, he created it with no fear. Man had no fear of the animals, of nature, for provision, of the future, death, of God, or of Satan. But as soon as sin entered in, fear entered into the world. When God came looking for Adam, Adam hid himself and he said, I heard your voice in the garden and I was afraid and I was naked and I hid myself. The whole purpose of Jesus Christ coming to this world was to restore the relationship of man and God. Jesus Christ wants to take you and me back to a Garden of Eden relationship with him. No fear. In the first scripture that we read today, there are three important things to understand the promise of no fear. The promise was given to Timothy, who was a born-again believer. Timothy was obedient to the purpose of God and Timothy would use his gifts given to him by God to live a life with no fear. There are four areas of fear that I want to address today. I will not fear evil. I will not fear earthly circumstance. I will not fear what man can do. And I will not fear the future. Living without fear is no accident. This state of living is not a result of some random chance. This lack of fear comes through an on-purpose relationship with Jesus Christ. I have no fear gear as a born-again believer. I will not fear. I can identify with the prophet shepherd King David when he wrote in Psalm 23 in verse number 4, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. David had been called by God, anointed by God, and David had allowed God to become his shepherd. As submitted born-again believers, you and I must be able to say, I have no reason to fear evil because it has been removed by my life. I have no reason to fear evil because I have been anointed by God and I am submitted to God's plan for my life. Let God shepherd you and you can say, I will fear no evil. I have no fear gear because the Lord is my shepherd. I will not fear earthly circumstance or what man can do. Many of the fears that I listed at the beginning of my sermon were associated with earthly circumstances. We most often worry about circumstances over which we have no control. We have no control over the weather, the economy, or over the nations of this earth, or crime in our neighborhood. The answer to no fear of earthly circumstance, including that which man can do, is to be under the authority of one who can control man and earthly circumstance. 
Can you with confidence make the statement that David made while in the wilderness running from King Saul to avoid war and preserve life? In Psalm 56 and 4, he said, In God have I put my trust. I will not fear what flesh can do unto me. Fear is faith in the enemy. Consider the sequence of events in Psalm 53 and 4. Will those who do evil ever learn? They eat up my people like bread. They wouldn't think of praying to God, but then terror will grip them, terror like they have never known. God will scatter the bones of your enemies. You will be put to shame, for God has rejected them. Oh, that salvation would come from Mount Zion to rescue Israel. For when God restores his people, Jacob will shout with joy, and Israel will rejoice. Fear is faith in the enemy. David understood who he was, who his God was, and the tyranny of the enemy would not last. David understood that God would turn it around. David understood who he was. God had been in David's life. David had been anointed by God. David had allowed God to be shepherd. Have faith. If God is protecting you, there is nothing that man can do to destroy you. If God is protecting you, there is nothing that circumstances can do to destroy you. If God is protecting you, he will always come through. This next psalm is said to have been written by the prophet Samuel for David when he was anointed to be king of Israel. This was a prophetic psalm. These statements were made about David's future. Listen to what Samuel says. Psalm chapter 27 and verse number 1. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Of whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked came against me to eat up my flesh, my enemies, my foes, they stumbled. Though an army may encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war may rise against me, in this will I be confident. You see, the prophet Samuel was obviously seeing earthly circumstances in the future of David that could bring fear to his life. But these words of encouragement are meant to thwart the discouragement in advance. Trouble will come to your life and mine. Circumstances beyond your control will visit your life. People will fight your purpose. You will stumble sometimes. Fear will try to destroy you. You will need to remember the day that you were anointed. You will have to remember who anointed you. It was God who anointed you with his Holy Spirit. You will need to remember your past victories. Your past battles will strengthen you for your future conquests. Conquest never comes easy. You will overcome all these if you remember. If you remember the words of Jesus as recorded in John 16 and 33. These things have I spoken unto you that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. I have no fear, dear, because I have been anointed by God. The great apostle Paul wrote in Romans chapter number five, now hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. I will not fear earthly consequences or circumstances or what man can do. I will not fear the future, for I am a child of God and I am filled with the Spirit of God. A great deal of the key to no fear about the future is understanding God has provided for the present. Our North American culture feeds the greed of our human nature. You need more. You need better. You need the best. You will never have enough. But the Word of God has pointed words for the child of God. Hebrews 13 and 5 declares, Let your conduct be without covetousness. Let your conduct be without covetousness. Be content with such things as you have. 
For he himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you, so that we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper. I will not fear what man can do to me. The mindset of this scripture portrays contentment. As born-again believers, we must avoid the culture of greed. I would like for you to listen to that last scripture in a modern English translation. Then ask yourself, is this me? Don't be obsessed with getting more material things. Be relaxed with what you have, since God assured us, I will never let you down, never walk off and leave you. We can boldly quote, God is there, ready to help. I'm fearless no matter what. Who or what can get to me? Isn't that a great thought? Is that you? If God has given you what you have, if God has gotten you where you are, then God will be there for your tomorrow. Then God will provide for your tomorrow. You have no fear gear because, number one, you can say, I have been called by God, I have been anointed by God, and I have allowed God to shepherd me. I have no fear gear. John the Beloved wrote in 1 John 4 and 18, There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, because fear involves torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. The message translation said, There is no room in love for fear. Well-formed love banishes fear. Since fear is crippling, a fearful life, fear of death, fear of judgment, is one not yet fully formed in love. I have no fear, dear. I have no fear because I have been called by God, because I have been anointed by God. I have no fear, dear, because my life is submitted to the plan of God. I will not fear because the love of God is living in my heart by the Holy Spirit. I will not fear evil. I will not fear earthly circumstances or what man can do. I will not fear the future. This next and final statement and most important key I give to you from the writing of Jude. It is a tool that I have used many times to keep far from my heart. He's writing to the church that is in the midst of tribulation and says in Jude 1 and 20, But you, beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. So I say to you, church, pray. Pray in the Spirit. Pray with the understanding, and Jesus will wrap his love and his peace around you. You and I have no fear gear.